Hey everyone, this is Saksha Mandirata, founder of Lights Out Studio and partner at Lights Out Venture. Well, I've been onto something incredibly exciting for the past few months. I have met some of the most celebrated entrepreneurs in the country. This actually started with me identifying a gap in the Indian startup ecosystem. You see, even though startups dominated the past decade in our country, we still kept looking back at what Silicon Valley breeds in its culture. I thought it was time to change this. So here I am with an all new limited edition series where I talk to founders of some of the fastest growing startups in the country. And we ditch the traditional podcasting format that you've known. So sit back, sip that drink as I bring to you In The House. You would have heard of this brand no matter where you are in India. If you're an affluent shopper, this one has definitely crossed your feed at some point of time in life. Neiman's has been such an incredibly amazing brand. They've scaled so fast. What is the story behind Neiman's and Chhabra Brothers and the energy that they bring onto the table? Have you ever seen a Neiman's ad? It's so cool, breezy and comfortable to watch. Not just that, their shoes are amazing too. This episode has got every construct of building a direct-to-consumer brand. Neiman's is such a loved brand by everyone. What does it take to really scale or be the founder of Neiman's shoes? In the house with Taran Chabra, co-founder of Neiman's. This one's epic. I want to just understand, like today, if there was one thing you look back at, right, and you feel really happy about, while of course the decision to start Neiman's would yeah. would possibly be yeah. paramount, but if there's one thing you're really happy about, what does that look like? It's about uh, when I see people wearing Neiman's, right? Mm. When I see people talking about how a product is fit in their lives. Right? Yeah. Very simple example is I was meeting a, a bunch of friends last weekend mm. and uh, one of my friends dad uh, went to Jaipur for yeah. about a week Yeah, and he's very paranoid about the shoes that he wears. Yeah. Right? Uh, we told him that we'll deliver to his place. He yeah. didn't order online. Yeah, He went to a warehouse, mm. he picked up a bunch of shoes huh. and when I met him, he kept going gaga. Mm. Right? In fact, he started fighting with his kid saying, you're not going to touch my shoe. Yeah. You're not going to wear my shoe. Yeah. Right? This is fabulous right yeah. and, and when you hear that because it's an action it's like it is right yeah. and, and he said that you made walking easier for me mm. right i so look forward to wearing a shoe now with the yeah right? so that's something when you hear i think it's it's very satisfying right I, I think it's also got to do with the fact that this business has or the brand has a physical aspect to it right Absolutely. and people can touch feel experience yeah. Yeah. and give you feedback right Absolutely. right there like yeah. what do i think about it right they don't need to uh, you need you don't need user onboarding and so on and yeah, you know yeah. is there an angle on technology right beyond the the sourcing that you do from outside India is there an angle on technology that fits well with with a brand like Neiman's? It's a lot to do with um, you know predicting demand. Right? Mm. It's a lot to do with reducing the inventory churn. Mm. Right. It's a lot to do with predictive analytics on trying to figure out which color is going to do well, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Which color is going to do well for which demographic, yeah. right? Yeah. And we have an exact data stat wherein we know black color is going to sell out in this yeah. in this size in yeah. certain duration, right? Yeah. And we have a very strong data analytics practice, and I come from that background, right? So yeah. we thrive on looking at trends yeah. of consumer behavior, yeah. right? Looking at trends around certain seasons, yeah. And then seeing, okay, this product is going to do well. This is the demand, yeah. right? And then we predict basis that. Yeah. So I think our uh, product development journey, yeah. right? Our lean inventory yeah. has kind of been a learning from our our data background. Yeah. Is uh, yeah, you're right actually. You know, because see, your I don't think uh, you come from a school of thought where you want multiple product lines within your brand. Sure. Right. You want to champion what's out there, Absolutely. and then just try and test. Is that is that something that you've governed by design, or is that something that's experientially just happened? That was by philosophy, Fair. right? That was by thought process right from day one. Yeah. 
when we looked at creating demons, we said, you know, there's too much out there, right? Yeah. Now imagine you walk into a store, yeah. right? The experience is completely broken. You see a wall, yeah. which has close to 150 to 200 pairs. Yeah. It's impossible for our eyes to make out which color is better, yeah. which design is better, and they're placed symmetrically, yeah. right? So you can't. Yeah. So you rely on the sales guy to tell yeah. you yeah, absolutely. which is better. Yeah. Right? So we yeah. said, this can't work online, yeah. right? You got to create less mm. and create the best. Mm, uh, choices I feel are more confusing. Absolutely, right? Yeah. The more you confuse, the more time the consumer is going to take. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So you give them less options, you give them the best. Yeah. And, you know, reduce the apprehension, reduce the clutter. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah. And that's, that's the mindset, right? When we started, say, back in December 2018, yeah. we started with just three colors, right? Yeah. The blacks, the grays, and the blues. Yeah. It worked. Uh, and consumers started liking it. Repeat started coming in. Then we launched eight colors in the same product. Yeah. Again, a very thoughtful decision of yeah. not going wide too soon yeah. and going deeper. So there was testing. So back me up a little. There was testing on two colors, you said. Three colors. Three colors. And uh, it was largely for whether the product fits or no? It was not in the product, huh. right? It's about the feedback on the product. So we had already done a beta launch yeah. in October. Yeah. That was about 500 odd pairs that yeah. we had given out to larger community yeah. folks that had <coughs> new, right? Some established entrepreneurs, mm. right? And we had tested. And the feedback was great for two months. There was not a lot of marketing, right? A bunch of LinkedIn connects and messages, right? Reach outs and telling people to just try the product, right? Yeah. No harm, just give us feedback. Yeah. And post two and a half months, we said, okay, the response is good. Mm. Now let's launch, you know, let's get this out in the market. Yeah. And so we launched in multiple sizes. Yeah. It was predominantly for men. Now the design is unisex. Yeah. But we just started with men as a, as a mm. focus area, mm. right? And we just started with three colors. Because these three colors are the ones that you'd wear in a ton of occasions, yeah. right? You'd prefer yeah. a black. Yeah. You can't go wrong with a blue. Yeah. You can't go wrong with a gray. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So no, I have a I have a black and a white, and it just fits in with everything. I mean, absolutely. Right. It's it's wired. You you don't want fancy designs on this, right? Like, you're wearing it for comfort, and you are, uh, you're wearing it to fit your lifestyle. Absolutely. Right. Uh, so yeah, I agree. Is is. Do you feel daunted by? Uh, communities in footwear whether it is uh, you know sneakers or whether it is formals or any like there people wear shoes so that they make them stand out right that's the inherent mindset uh, are you daunted by that or do you embrace that in some way i don't think we're daunted by that right i think we feel uh, you know stand out means different to different people fair yeah. Right, and what we've done is we have colors which stand out. Yeah, we have the reds, we have yeah. the purples, we have the pinks, we have the whites. Yeah, so they, they right? suit your personality. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right, and and all these colors are all loved by yeah. by our community. Yeah. Right. So for us, style and standing out means different. Yeah. And for today's consumer, also it's different. Right. Yeah. You reduce the number of colors. Right. Yeah. You make it predominantly minimal, and then it fits into so many outfits right and then the decision making is is super quick and for us that's worked right because back in the day when i used to buy a running shoe in the us right or a casual shoe i felt this is way too loud i used to run from my place to the train station right and i used to take a two-hour train ride to get to my work and then wear a formal shoe because the casual shoe that is sold today yeah it's just so difficult that it doesn't fit your work style it doesn't look good in, in a, in a semi-casual attire, right? It has way too many colors, right? So we felt the design connect isn't there with the today's consumer. So hence we made minimal, we went with monochromatic and we said, this is fabulous. Right? Very Apple. Absolutely. Do people end up comparing Neiman's with, with Allbirds or was that even an inspiration or, and how do you deal with that? So I don't think we've gotten that a lot. Right, Allbirds operates in a very different ecosystem. And Neiman started with a philosophy of creating the most comfortable footwear, right? And when we started diving deeper into what defines comfort, right? Then we said it's, you know, the soles are great, 
but the materials that are chosen predominantly define how well the shoe is going to fit you and we said if these materials can be made with natural fibers right look at the environmental impact that we will have right if we keep consuming materials like we're doing in the next 20 years there's not going to be anything left so we said let's become a meaningful brand let's become a purpose driven brand and we were the first in india to do so right we've the first ones who've started on this journey to create comfortable and sustainable footwear right and allbirds was operating in a very different market right? we said how could we create a a footwear that's durable comfortable for the indian footwear market right india as a country is very diverse in its languages and its food and also its weather and the number of shoes that we buy in india today is way lesser than a us so the product has to be that much more better for people to appreciate what it. what is the statistic people buy shoes more in india than in the us no people buy more in the us in the right? us now this term is called per capita hmm. what this means is how many pairs does a person own in a year interesting and us when we started was about 3.8 and india was lingering around 1.6 so look at the what, what what demo is this is this a it's across the board it's across right? the board this is i'm not just taking a look at the more evolved market yeah this is the entire market okay. right this is mass economy premium yeah. premium right super premium <coughs> and today with the recent study that's come out the number of pairs after the covid scenario in the us has become 7 7.5 and this is in, this is counter intuitive right people are not going out people are not going out but they want to own a pair correct why is that so it's what's going on is see our uh, shopping behavior has changed right because brands i'll fall in the same category i'm just trying to dissect what's the what's the intent behind it because i've been holding shoes oh, i did not realize i've been holding shoes and i don't know why actually so let's look at this way right from a consumer mindset now today a bunch of brands are focused on fast fashion they want to sell more and when they sell they want to sell more they've categorized shoes by activity they're saying okay you're going to work buy this formal shoe you're going for an evening lounging you got to buy a loafer right now you're going out for a run now this requires a completely different shoe then walking today is again categorized into a different shoe then sport athletic right and then this pure play party so imagine the shoving down of number of pairs that a that a brand wants you to buy from and us being a more evolved market is able to keep up with this right we in india we still growing right the urbanization is is kicking up yeah. right and people are trying to appreciate okay this is a product that's going to hold well for me and slowly and steadily they're trying to adopt more is the and this is also because you've seen the dtc market evolve right alongside uh, neemans as a brand uh, do you think the category ca- the categorization or the sub categorization across different sectors uh, has been uh, has been palpable in a way is it happening people are using or recognizing brands for different needs different parts of the different times of the day different routines is that setting in more than it used to before it is right uh, now let's look at uh, the brand space in india mm. right there's a several evolved western brands right yeah. let's take the nike's of the world right the adidas of the world right they're predominantly a functional driven brand right when you think about a nike shoe or an adidas shoe you're going to relate about an activity you're not going to look at buying casual shoe from a nike and adidas right it's just how the brand has been built over the years right you you imagine an athlete you'll imagine them wearing an under armor or nike or an adidas right and puma on the other hand has evolved very well in a lifestyle play it's saying it has lifestyle footwear it also has sports it has running right it has basketball so it has a categorization of footwear so just that how brands have evolved and build their identity is how consumers look at them but consumers are today definitely more evolved they're saying you know this is my core need they know whether they're flat foot right they know their foot density right they know what's going to fit well they know the shoe sizes accurately they walk into a store saying you know this is my requirement 
So I think India is more evolved today. Hence, you see 25% of Western brands, you know, capturing India's ecosystem. This was not the case a decade ago. Sketchers has come into the play last seven years, eight years, clocking 600 yeah. plus crores. That's a fabulous number. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And 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 do you compete head on with them? I think today we compete <coughs> with a bunch of players, right? Mm. Uh, because when a consumer is buying, he's going to compare you with a, a plethora of options. He's going to compare you with the Indian brand space. Then because we talk about comfort so much, he's going to relate us to Skechers. He's going to imagine Crocs. He's going to look at Birkenstock, right? So today the value addition has got to be that much more to stand out in a consumer's lifestyle, yeah. right? So I think, yeah, com I think we compete with everybody out there. Is... Uh and I want to specifically get into this because uh, the past three and a half years since Neiman started, they've been uh, they've been like a wild roller coaster ride in some way, right? For you and we we've seen that across. Um, when you get into work every single day, what is the mindset? What's that mindset like of uh, sitting and running a high growth brand? Like, what is it that that you uh, feel about and how do you how do you express that? See, I think we are very very passionate folks, right? And and the passion runs right from the founder level to perhaps the person who even delivers our shoe, right? And uh, the passion is to really make a difference in people's lives, right? And that is by creating the best possible footwear, and we are obsessed to the core. Every product that's made today goes through a research development cycle for a year and a half, right? I have products which have been worked on for a year now and we have dropped because it didn't pass a consumer test. So every day there is that hustle, right? Yeah. Every day there is that uh, innovates fear, right? Saying, what if a consumer doesn't like it? Right? What if we've created a fabulous first product, which is Merino wool? Then we went on to yeah. slippers, now recycled, you know, the Relive Knit collection and every product has outdone itself. And the fear that we have is, will our existing customers say this product is not good enough? So it's not us, standing up to the expectations. Correct. It's because yeah, the that's bar a is big so one. high. Yeah. Right? The bar is so high, wherein they say, you know, even the best entrepreneurs in India right, have gone out and said, Neiman's is the most comfortable footwear I've ever yeah, worn. Yeah, I saw that. I saw it on right. Twitter. <laughs> right. So that's, that's happened a lot. How did that make you feel? It was, it was fabulous. And that's organic, huh? That's all organic. Yeah. Right. And in fact... No, I want to actually emphasize the fact that it's organic because I know the story behind it. But uh, yeah, but like back to how did it make you feel? In fact, we kept taking screenshots of it, right? <laughs> and uh, I know it was my wallpaper for about a week or 10 days and everybody within our team was sending it to their family, to their friends saying, you know, Mr. Harsh Mariwala has spoken about this, right? And in fact, he spoke about this to the ET yeah. and said, in an ET podcast, he was wearing our shoes and the journalist asked, okay, which shoe is this, right? And he said, this is Neiman's. I've been wearing this for a couple of years. I just And then he them. tweeted about it. Yeah, he tweeted about it. He wears them all over. Then ET reached out to us for interview saying, because he's talking about it, we want to speak to you, right? So I think that's the, that's community building to the core, right? But this is all after everything was like you were established in, in, in your really. customer I think, segment. Uh, he oh, this spoke about on. it, yeah, very early. This was about six, eight months before, right after we launched, right? And, and uh, since then, I think a bunch of... So that was an inflection point. A bunch of inflection points, right? I don't think just one... Uh, tweet has caught in the, in yeah. the, the eye but I think a lot of people who reach out to to my team on a daily basis we get LinkedIn nudges we get messages on Instagram right we get people sending images of their entire family saying we bought everything now give us more right because whoever we see in our family is wearing Neiman's in a bunch of different colors we can't buy more right so I think that's fabulous to hear right that they've loved it so much yeah. that they've told their friends they've told their family Right, they've gone out and actually spoken about this, right? So that that means a lot. You brought up a point saying this is a physical, tangible project, right? And today people want to talk about footwear, right? It's so visible out there. You're not going to talk about your T-shirt much. I think I think the social channels give you uh, they give you reason to amplify who you are. Correct. 
and this fits well within within that segment as a mindset right i mean uh, and i think if you identify that that customers would be willing to be vocal about my product if they yeah. really like it yeah you you've hit it right absolutely right and then then i think word of mouth spreads way faster than than your you know ad numbers would ever will yeah i think the ad numbers are just to get visibility it right? is yeah Today for sure it is for sure. the community right yeah uh I was talking to one of my cousins right who stays in uh, indore and she was telling me that her niece is going to this fashion institute in in bombay and now they have a curriculum in italy so about 100 people are are working from italy for about 3 months and out of 100 folks 100 students right 30 of them were wearing neemans right so that's a f- staggering number right and their professors buys every product the day it's launched right so these are the things that you love to hear this is, right? this is this is some validation that you don't even expect absolutely right i think yeah. you don't uh, expect it coming straight up right because thir- 30% is is a big chunk of the audience right but it's it's great to see right the the person that you want to reach out to is already speaking about it right because your community is going to take you deeper yeah. now uh, when i see you wearing the shoe i'm going to ask you okay if i've seen this product somewhere yeah this looks like a neiman yeah. shoe right uh, and this happened in a in a founder meet that was in goa one of the larger investors who's invested in boat you know came up to me and said uh, <laughs> you know is this a neiman shoe yeah and he came up to you and said correct right and and you must be the founder of neiman so i said yes and he was telling me that they did a, a survey within their team and uh, from 10 people five people said that neiman should be the company we should speak to and so this is these are fabulous uh, validations yeah. right and aman came up to me and said jab aap koi product dekh ke identify kar le founder ko that's that's the ultimate dream right yeah. that your product is is visible and the ecosystem is identifying it and that goes back to our thesis that our products look so simple right they are they have all about comfort and minimalism right and they're not flashy right so you can identify your neemans from a distant yeah. right so it's yeah. imagine it's like uh, for lack of a better example the sikh community right yeah you'll see a turban out yeah. there you know this guy is a sikh yeah. right? so it's it's got to be that if it doesn't yeah. create that vibe then i think yeah. you're not done it right yeah and uh, you you you've seen a bunch of things evolve alongside you right i want to i want to just get your perspective on what's happening in d2c today right i mean this this one brand is fair but what's the ecosystem up to and what what do you think is happening because in one place you have a plethora of investments like 2021 saw the maximum value and volume of investments ever right um the other places where last year we also had most and this is new investments right sure. uh, startups we also had the most startups being or the or the more recent companies starting to get listed yeah right so there's maturity then yeah. there are signs of that and then there are acquisitions right because while earlier you had the hulls in the pngs that would acquire a ddc yeah. brand and you to wait 8 10 years yeah now there is a there's a zomato mensa and tata is entering the game and you know there's also a nike that's come in and a bunch of players right yeah. across dtc different sectors what do you think is happening what's the what's what is the outlook right like from a founder's perspective i think the channel has as fabulous recognition like you said right now let's look at the space when we got in say about 3 and a half 4 years ago right it was still early days in in d2c right a bunch of players were predominantly amazon driven flipkart driven right which is also an ecosystem play among d2c I think they opened things Correct. up like they opened things up. The right? habit of buying online came Absolutely. from there for us. Right. The validation was there. Yeah. Because you could trust an Amazon. Yeah. Right? You could t- trust a Flipkart, you could trust a Myntra. You know your money's not going anywhere, yeah. right? You knew that uh, you know the product that you're going to get is a genuine product. So this started building trust in the consumer's mind. This reduced apprehension. Right? That's when when brands like us started evolving. brands like us started talking about why their product is better people started noticing it so say that again and why do you why why do you say people started noticing again now let's look at the whole 2019 2020 era right or 
Boats of the World started from 2015 to 2016, yeah. right? In fact, Boat got benefited because Amazon, they're one of the earlier adopters of Amazon as a play. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So when, when we started, Amazon had already based, made a mark, right? People knew that you could shop online. Correct. There was a channel that was already built. Yeah. Right? And then Geo revolutionized data rates. Yeah. Right? So India there was access. Now there was habit and there's access. Correct. Yeah. And then India had most people surfing the web than any part of the world. Yeah. Around the 2018 era. Yeah. And we said we have three options, right? One is go the distributor route, mm. which has been done by the largest Indian brands today and which is going to take so long to build a brand or go open up your own stores. And once you open your stores, how do you drive traffic? So we said, these two are not the viable options. Let's go talk direct to the consumer. Let's put the word out on why the product is better. Let's focus on content, storytelling, leverage the social channels, leverage the intent that a consumer has today. So in the last three to four years, right, and in fact, COVID in a way has accelerated 100%, how has. we've become more lazy yeah. and how we've started to go out lesser and look at shopping online way more. So I think the digital ecosystem has benefited the most. Hence the investments in last year, yeah. right, have accelerated and a lot of investors have noticed the scale that is possible today and the initial validation that's possible today via D2C. Both from a, and on this one, right? Like both from a founder standpoint, when you have an idea and you want to conceptualize it, or from an investor when you when you want to capitalize on it. Sure. Right? Uh, do you think there's a certain FOMO that's, that's there that if I don't do this now, it might not, it might be too late? I think there is, right? With the amount of competition that's going to come in now, it's also on the founder perspective. It's also on the investor perspective. It is. Right? Yeah. Because brands have scaled 10, 20, 30x in less than 12 months, right? Look yeah. at what Mama Earth has achieved, yeah. right? In, in a very, very short period of time, right? So fabulous execution, great leverage of data and channels. And this is all online, right? Like you, you start recognizing brands online more than you used to with offline brands now because you connect with them much easier. Correct. See, now what you do is... Uh, you're not going to the store enough. Yeah. All you do is every day you open up your phone. Yeah. You know, you browse Instagram, right? You look at Facebooks of the world. And when you see brands nudging you, yeah. right? You start creating that connect, yeah. right? And then you will try the product. If you love the product, you go deeper. You try one more product. So today, the connect with a new age brand is happening far more quicker. Yeah. Now imagine the likes of metros of the world, right? which started in 1960s. They took 20 plus years to get to 100 crore scale. You know, which is what I'm saying, no? So everything is leapfrogging. Correct. Right? Is, is this a chaos or you think this is, these are signs of maturity because the US market didn't evolve like, didn't, did not evolve like this, right? It was still stable uh, and it perhaps evolved on the technology front rather than the direct to consumer front. Right, direct to consumer kept happening in bits and pieces, and 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 you've seen that. Do you think this is this is chaotic in a way, or do you think the chaos would lead to something more emerging? No, I wouldn't call it chaos, right? I think it is. Uh, it's channel execution at its peak, right? Now, US had seen has already seen D two C execution play, right? Now let's look at all birds of the world, right? Let's look at Rothys of the world, right? And Everlane, right? Uh, fabulous, fabulous execution. Great product. Sold predominantly online. Look at Bonobos, yeah. right? These are amazing brands that have been built in a very, very short period of time. And they've been able to execute and leverage the digital channel. And then they've been successfully been able to create their word of mouth. That has spread when they've gone offline. And that's where the leverage is truly come, right? Now, digital ecosystem is still, is not going to give you a 500 score scale, right? Even if Mama yeah. Earth has gotten to that scale, 40 to 50% of the business is offline. Because the leverage that they have had at a brand execution play, yeah. they've taken it to stores, yeah. right? 
and that's very very important as to brands when they use that leverage and start diversifying the channel expansion we end up uh, by virtue of the kind of nature of business that i'm into i end up working with a bunch of brands in the us right sure both at an evolved stage and at a at an early stage sure <clears throat> i think they leverage so highly on social channels and because they exist right like because it exists as a need to be felt or to be shown on a social platform right yep. and and that's how yeah. that's how the mindset evolves yeah um and of course there is there is technological advantage of how the ecosystem utilizes each other and you know uh, the deliveries are faster and better and uh, the the merchant payments are very different and and the system the ecosystems evolved on the on a d2c front right uh what is the gap today in india and uh, is there an accelerator needed in some way whether it's policy whether it is new business opportunity idea what is that is there a gap in d2c today i think the gap is how we could reach out to larger markets right or from india from india right i think today most of the brands that i am seeing coming up could be sold in any part of the world right how could they execute their digital play by sitting in india is going to be the next big thing right because you could expand to the us which is one of the largest markets you could be selling in middle east you could be selling in europe right and you don't have to be physically there the digital channel is so much more bigger the acceptance rate is that much more higher and the payment realization is that much more quicker right hence there are frauds are lesser and policy Correct. frameworks are easier right? there few yeah. brands that have cracked this right yeah. now look at vadam right yeah. how it's executed the international expansion yeah. play right that's yeah. massive yeah and i think the second gap is going to be of course the acceptance rates right if if there's going to be a magical wind and i'd say reduce the amount of cash on delivery that happens in india right i think it's going to be a fabulous boost to all the digital brands right that way people are going to start using upi payments a lot more credit cards debit cards right and make the delivery systems that much more quicker right today we have fabulous deliveries we are able to deliver in 24 hours in most of the metro cities tier 1 and tier 2 but in tier 3 tier 4 there's a massive challenge there are products that are taking upwards of 4 5 days for brands like us right and and that's not given in a in a ecosystem where people are comparing you with amazons and flipkarts yeah. in the world right you yeah. got to deliver in 24 to 48 hours yeah. and 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 brands are standing up to it right i Correct. mean they want to even if it's not a product that you need in 24 hours you want to you want to be with within the consumer's reach correct right because that's the that's the habit and that's the nature correct. when you think of starting a direct to consumer brand and this could relate back to when you did how do you know what is your product market fit did you know that did you did you get feedback on it uh, or was that pure experiential so i think the first thought for us was uh, a product market fit is very different based on product right basis your scale right basis the consumer sizing that you're going after the target market the target opportunity right so product market fit is always an evolution right and yeah this is what i truly feel but back in the days when we started yeah actually market is evolving to aapka pmf correct. bhi evolve hoga correct yeah. right fair and so when we started uh, you know truly bootstrapped launch in a premium product with a material that is never imagined in footwear right all of these things created a big why but we were very confident about the product that we were building the channel that we were leveraging and the consumer that we were going after no, but how did you arrive at here is a demographic i want to serve with this product and why so now we went after there were several cohorts that we picked right and i feel uh, you know when you're building a product right you never go after a very very big cohort right you pick a smaller cohort you know nail it down make them your true community and then you evolve from there start niche correct and that's where we said right we picked a material that we had narrowed down after 2 years right and we said this is a fabulous material when people wear this right you just 
got to get them to wear and after they wear it right they'll be like wow i've never worn something like this and going with this philosophy we had created several firsts right we launched india's first merino wool this was the first footwear that was sock free right a shoe that could be worn in summer and in winter and plus very easy to maintain so a lot of firsts that people didn't expect from the footwear space but they wanted it right is what we had narrowed down why are creating this product is and your we, is your brand position to and and this i'm asking because sure. it will sort of relate to what you're saying is your brand position to serve the affluent market largely not really i think we are going after a bigger chunk right and hmm. we started with merino wool as a product because we felt this is going to be a fabulous material right and being bootstrapped right uh, this material is premium right so it had to be launched at a certain price point and the moment we started scaling up we started looking at ways through which we can reduce our costs that's where we brought it down significantly to the 5 grand range and then we said right there's a big chunk of gen z's out there who buy at sub 2 grand what could we do with a sustainable material yet comfortable product we picked recycled cotton brought it down at sub 2 grand then we said open footwear is going to be the next big thing because people were not stepping out of their house and india is a very large shop in behavior of slippers and slides yeah and yeah. we launched a slipper that's sub 600 rupees made with recycled tires fabulous durability great sustainability right anti skid so it had all the properties that people wanted at just the right price point so we want to make our products affordable to a larger chunk of demographic but we wouldn't be able to create and cater to the unorganized market or the masses market yeah i mean you're you're priced at a at a 5500 6000 on an average right that's your not really so our average aov today is sub 1600 rupees that's wow. how we've diversified in the last 3 years was it higher before it was sub 5 grand right mm. when we launched it was sub 5 grand like you said we've created a community we've built a large following and then we started giving them more products and we started bringing more more mainstream today we have sub upwards of 10 million community right and these guys have these guys are buying slippers these guys are buying slides now they right. now things fit into their lifestyle there's there's Correct. awareness right and it's the leverage of using the right market sizing the right price points and giving them the right product right it takes a while to fit in uh i wouldn't say it takes a while just the industry that we are in right footwear takes a while to crack now the industry is so diverse there are so many players at play that to execute and create a product takes a lot of time hence you have never seen innovation that has happened in india right for the largest part a lot of indian brands have brought in scale via price crushing right that's where a few brands are doing sub 2000 crores i don't think that's sustainable i think after a point you'll plateau uh simply because if pricing is your moat uh then you're not focused on retention then you're not focused on uh, repeat purchases loyalties and so on right you're focused on acquisition and acquisition will plateau beyond a point like how much will price and discounts uh sustain brand momentum so there are two parts to india right there's one that predominantly shops online and there's one that in our market buys at sub 500 800 rupees right and that's where the volume was say about 4 years ago hence because technology was not there offline and distributors was the only way to reach out to build massive scale and brand building didn't come naturally to a lot of indian brands so they relied on crushing prices and using only price as the moat but now we are coming in we are saying today's consumer is different today's consumer wants more value is questioning the why behind a product hence and is willing to pay that price correct yeah and that price has to be reasonable 
Yeah. Right? Now we have products, like I said, the average AOV is 1500 to 1800, right? So today, even an 18 year old can afford us, right? A 22 year old, right? We have audiences that starts right sub 18 to 65 plus. We have dads that are gifting shoes to their kids. We have kids that are gifting their sh our shoes so to their Fitting dads. in those those segments Absolutely, of lifestyle right? pretty seamlessly. And that's how our community <coughs> has evolved. That's how we've been able to build scale and reach out to a larger demographic in India. What is your outlook in on investments when you enter that room or that conversation where you know a prospective investor may be sitting here, right? When you when you go in that pitch, uh, curious to understand because it's is that is also evolving today. Investors are coming to founders, right? Because there are interesting products, and uh, founders also have the option to go to multiple investors because there is a certain level of FOMO sure. at both levels. Sure. Right? So, what is your mindset when you enter that room? I think it's evolved over the period of years, right? Now, when we started Neiman's, uh, you know, me coming back from a US ecosystem, right? Uh, been away from India for a decade, had seen products like Greek yogurt launch in India, right? Products like raw pressery where people were caring about an all natural juice. So I was seeing this while I was in the US, right? Saying, now people are caring about better products. So India is moving towards that space. But when we stepped into the ecosystem, we knew that if we walk into an investor room with just a product saying, we feel this is going to be the next big thing, we knew that was not going to happen. Because uh, for a large part, right, uh, our Indian ecosystem has evolved by looking at other players, right? Has evolved. We're not change makers, right? We are not backing uh, folks that are first in the industry. We'd rather stay away and see somebody else take that position. So when we had started, we knew just a demo product would not be able to get a seed money. That's not the case today, right? So we said, let's bootstrap this. Let's put all the savings that we have because we believe in this, right? And we did that. And that was a gamble. Uh, it was a calculated gamble. It was a calculated right? gamble. It was a calculated decision that me and my co-founder Amar, who's my elder brother, we'd taken it and said, we believe in this product. The market is large enough. Now we could have gone to any market, right? And in fact, the first five pitches that I made when I came to a startup event, investors had told me, go launch it in the UK, go launch it in the Europe. You have the access, you're already in the US. I understand, I get that a lot. Right. I get that a lot for a lot of brands, I mean, yeah. Correct. Yeah. So we said, no, India is the second largest market in terms of footwear, right? And this market has seen absolutely no innovation. So there is a massive, massive opportunity here to create a brand at scale. And we believed in it, right? And we see, so we put everything that we had on the line for the first six months or eight months. And as the results started coming in, then the investors started noticing this. The sentiment would change. Correct. And because, now let's look at footwear as a thesis, right? Or as a, as a market. It hasn't seen larger brands come in. It's been largely been a family driven business that has evolved in 50, 60 years. Yeah. And hence, because of such large distributors at play, investors have found, you know, or thought about difficulty in execution. But we've bought a channel. We've said, this is an actual channel expansion. If you have the right product, you could scale and build meaningful scale at a, in a very, very short period of time. There was a wide space. I agree. Correct. There was a wide space when you came in. Uh, I think, this story would be very similar to, to say someone like a boat, right? They identified the, the yeah. gaps that there are, the price point, the yeah. value that a customer can drive uh, and online. And, uh, and, and, and how is, how is the sentiment changed today with, with an investor? Like, do you still have to, you don't have to prove the product anymore. I'm sure. I mean, there's validation and, and numbers will speak for themselves. So, uh, and you are an investor too, right? In some ways now, uh, what is it that you look for in an investor now at, at, at this mature of maturity within a brand? See, I think we've been very lucky and we've handpicked the people that we've worked with, right? Let's look at our first seed investors, right? Anikat Capital, right? Uh, I still remember when I had that discussion with Ashwin, with Tushar and with Ajay, right? All of these three folks were our, in, 
where our customers. So there was never a doubt about the product. It was about our philosophy, our execution. What happens from here? Correct. Right. So we've been uh, very lucky because these guys knew that consumer brands don't scale instantly. They need to be crafted with passion, right? You need to go after that community. You need to go after that target audience and really nail it down. And post when Nikhil came on from Sixth Sense, I think the thesis was pretty much similar. Right? Nikhil is considered one of the brightest consumer minds in the country. And he spotted us and he said, you know, I really want to do this. I, I, I feel you guys can build a massive, massive Indian brand that can leave the Western giants behind. And somebody who came with that research before speaking to us was fabulous to see that he had identified the market. He had known the challenges in execution. He had seen our product. He had loved our product and he said, I trust you guys, you can do this. And he was a guy who's, who's progressively forthcoming. Absolutely. Uh, right? And I think building. Uh, an investor and a founder journey is one of those, right? There are going to be ups, there are going to be downs. There are going to be times when you'll, you know, you'll stagnate or you'll need that sounding board. And there are times when I call up Tushar, I call up, uh, you know, Nikhil saying, I remember one of the products that we were launching, right? I called up Tushar and said, Tushar maza nahi hai. And I have this interesting uh, test that I do for myself, wherein I wear the shoes and I sleep with them. I literally sleep with them, right? And I say, if I can sleep with them and I don't feel the shoe, it's got to pass my sleep test. And for one of the products, I, I called Tushar and said, Sone mein maza nahi hai. And he was bamboozled, he said, kya bol hai? And then he called me and I told him, this is the test, right? If it doesn't pass this, it's not good enough. And after having spent eight months, he told me that, nahi maza to mat kar. And we shelved that product. We didn't launch it. And so it's, it's that mad So there's passion. no sunk cost fallacy associated with, at now at least, right? Yeah. And it's, it's still there, right? I think we, uh, today, we have a ton of research analysts, right? We have footwear designers that work with us and it's across the board the same. Yeah. We say, if you don't fall in love with what you're making, right, then let's not launch it, right? Because if the cons if we don't fall in love, our consumers are not going to fall in love, right? Yeah. And similarly, if you can't believe that you can sell this product, yeah. then don't make it. Is your outlook towards scale uh, changing every six months? I think it changes every month for us, right? Because after uh, a point, I mean, you also start questioning, right? Like. Now what? How do we how do we sustain the momentum? Yeah. And that's something, you know, our growth team, we as founders, right? We have a lot of discussions, right? Because what happens is when you start scaling so massively, then you start looking at uh, executions at larger play. You look at channel expansion, you look at, you know, geographic expansion, you look at audience expansion. And today we go after uh, real challenges that we see within the footwear space. Now, people don't tell you this, right? Uh, but you've got to get extracted out. There are people who have walked up us and said, I'm a banker. I love Neiman's, but I wear them outside work. Why can't you create a formal shoe which is as comfortable, right? There are moms who shop from us, say, our kids, you know, need durable and comfortable shoes. Right? Look at the amount of pressure that kids have today. They've stopped going out. The games have become real. The iPads have replaced the, the outdoor activities. So moms want to give something to the kids. So this is a problem statement that we've picked up. Right? We've picked up the formal market as a problem statement. We've picked up you know, how walking is an activity which is done by a larger demographic. And we've solved that with our Relive Knit line, our Wool Jogger line. So we look at you know, specific cohort trends and problem statements and then go after them. Yeah, and by by virtue of that, yeah, you're, ac you're acquiring a new customer Absolutely. base. You're trying to study them and, and while the existing retains and grows in, in, in some ways. Right, and this is what happens, right? Yeah. We, when we launched, we launched with All About Wool. We started spoke, speaking and about... And the fundamental remains the same. Correct. Yeah. And we said, we started with a product. 
and then always the thesis was evolved into a brand. Then we started talking about different technologies. We talk, started speaking about product features. When we launched our Relive line, right, which is made with plastic bottles, we made it the biggest story. We said, the moment somebody sees a plastic bottle anywhere, they should remember Neiman's. That's the kind of recall that we should have. And there are consumers after six months of research has said, I don't even remember that you have a wool shoe. So we, the wool shoe is take, it's, it's doing well. It has a user base. But the next material that we go after is made that much more bigger that it can sustain the push afterwards. Similarly, when we'll go after the next cohort or the next problem statement, we'll make it that much more bigger and better. And then we go after a specific. That helps us drive scale and also helps us attract new audience, right? Which is in itself gives you, increases your average order value, helps in building repeats, reduces your customer acquisition cost. This is all, this is all a mature brand at play, Correct. right? With, with all the levers that, that you can Today. work around. Yeah. Does, uh, and we're sort of tapering towards uh, you more individually as, as how you deal with things. Uh, are you too anxious as a person? as an entrepreneur? I think initially I was, right? I want to do stuff real quick, right? You wanted to? I wanted to, right? And this was back in the day when I was looking at footwear, right? And as a consumer, I had understood the problem statement that I was going after. But you as want to solve when, that now? Correct. I wanted yeah. to do it, get it out in the market yeah. in six months. right? But when I traveled to the footwear hubs, I saw the actual time it took to craft a product. Then I said, it's not about how soon you launch. It's not about how soon you execute. It's about when you do it, right? The kind of impact that you're able to create. And you settle down as a founder, right? You settle down your nerves, right? You learn yeah. with execution, right? You learn with your team. I think there's a certain charisma that Amar brings to the table yeah. in between both of us, right? He's the more saner, the more calmer, I'm the more excited, I'm mm -hmm. the more let's do this, let's do this, let's do that, right? And I'll spend 15 hours in a day and I'll, I'll create a strategy document saying, let's go after this. And it'll have 10 pointers. Then we'll cater down and say, okay, these are way too many focus areas. Let's channel down and focus at one. But I think we, as founders, complement each other a lot in that way wherein, uh, you know, I go after the moon and then he gets me down saying, okay, relax, relax. And let's focus on this. This is more realistic. This, this is what is we can realistic. go after today, yeah. right? So, and I think you've got to have that in your team, right? You got to have one who goes after the impossible and one who, you know, channels you down and says, this is more realistic. Let's execute this. This is a low hanging fruit. Let's do this. Let's save cost here. So. Are there, uh, are there some people individually who you look up to? Outs like in, in, in a work setup or, you know, from a work inspiration standpoint? I think my dad, right? Uh, has been somebody who I have, uh, you know, looked up to over the years, right? Now, he still tells us stories wherein he used to work during the day and used to, you know, go to college in the night, right? That's the kind of struggle that, you know, our parents have evolved from, right? For us to be able to Absolutely take do these leaps, do, yeah. Right, and uh, I remember when I'd gotten my first job and I was away from home, I used to write emails to my dad, right? And I used to write my daily journals as emails saying, this is what I've done today. This is who so I So that he, he knows, he what, knows it, what his right? son is doing. And, yeah. and uh, the amount of conversations that we still have on a daily basis, he tells me, okay, this is wrong. You know, you shouldn't be doing this with his accounts background, with his financial background. It's, it's again, a, a very different mindset that he has, right, and we, but I think it's about taking that advice and learning from him. So I think we both, me and Amar, you know, look up to him on what he's achieved, how he's, how he's raised us and hence we've named our brand on our parents right and goes back to our family values as to giving back to them right this is this is the indian origin speaking in some way right like as international as a brand would want to be to be honest like there is a route to it there is there is right i think there are uh, you know no matter you know how i've stayed away from the uh, from india for about a decade has I've that been, gotten you closer to home it is in a way, right? And I think, in fact, it had brought me back to India every six months. I used to, I started spending a lot of time with my family, with my, and of course, I'm very close to my brothers, right? 
and that way we used to plan a lot of trips together you know we used to pick a country a year and say let's go to this country and and spend time here so that we have no noise right we we spend as much time together and that's where a lot of brainstorming happened over the years right from 2012 2013 i used to call amar saying this is an idea that i've studied right this is the market let's do this in india right let's do that right and we used to we've we've researched so that whole ideas. thing the bug of entrepreneurship yeah, was there it was always there right the first yeah. day that i started working in an it sector i said okay this is outsourcing why the hell i can't do this yeah. right yeah. If, and if, everything you look at there is a, there's a business associated correct, to it right, right? Yeah. if somebody can have me being paid at 10 times and 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 then why i why can't i do that as a business right so i why do i work for someone else it was always there yeah. right i think uh, and that's something in founders and entrepreneurs right it is about uh, creating something meaningful and that apprehension saying i can build this at a at a larger scale that's what gets you to start your own business right and that's how we also started looking at neemans interesting parting thoughts right so sure. uh there's a great brand story there's a great founder story right and there's there's a road to scale what is the one thing outside of work that 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 lets you sleep well at night so i think uh, when i hear my f- my first kid right he's 6 year old he comes to work twice a week he's 6 years old and correct. he comes to work twice a week correct okay and when i he- hear the insights that he has when i hear his uh, his mindset it's fabulous right and i that gives me a lot of uh, you know a uh, lot of sense of delight that my kid is talking about entrepreneurship he talks about building business at scale he talks about consumers he comes up to me and says i went to my principal today and i told them that i am from neemans and you got to have all the kids and he said i am from neemans yeah yeah and and he's actually come up to me and said dad you have to come to my school you got to pitch there are about 500 kids in our school i don't want them to be wearing nike's or adidas the world why can't we make shoes for them he comes on a saturday he walks up to my design team and says you guys take too long too long to decide to launch you've done wool you've done recycled plastic bottle you've done cotton what are you doing why you can't you take them on the camera no you should put them on the camera in your next ad i feel now <laughs> i want to in fact in one of our photo shoots with uh, sunny koshali was there he was talking to the actor you know he was t- asking him feedback as to how does how does he like the product so when i see that i'm saying i want to breed a culture of entrepreneurship right i do not want to breed a culture of saying go work for somebody else you got to have an idea if you're creating a problem which is large enough to be solved imagine how big a product you can create now what i tell my kid is if you go after a problem where everybody would give you a dollar and if that problem appeals to a billion people you've made a billion dollar business and that's what entrepreneurship is about right if you can large if you can solve a larger problem you made a difference in so many people's lives yeah 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 i think this is something that i sleep uh, i no matter what time i come home he waits for me he he discusses with me on how my day was at work he asks me what new did you do in fact this is what he asked me right how much time do you spend on investor pitches he questions I'm, I'm finding me it difficult to believe he's 6 years but <laughs> oh, very is, interesting yeah, i think we got to get him in front of the camera but he yeah. is, he is one of those guys he become like a star kid <laughs> interesting 